What is up, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Pez Universe podcast. We've got no Weds today, but we do have two special guests in Spoonie Pizzas and Camel Dino, and we're going to be talking all things eFootball, what we played a couple of months ago in an early build in Windsor, to now when V1 has been released and everything in between, so V0.9 and V0.9.1. So yeah, we're going to go straight into it, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Cam, just to kick things off, I mean, we obviously played the game, right? Like, what was your, what was your initial thoughts after we played that, and then you know V zero point nine came out, and we had to kind of deal with the whole, you know, what did what what did you guys play? You know, these weren't your impressions or whatever. Compared to now, when V one is out, and we can probably see a lot of what we played in V zero point one. Um, like, what has been your overall kind of thoughts on that whole process? I suppose. I think for me, um, when I played the Windsor build, um, again, I wasn't blown away. Mm. I was surprised with what I've played, uh, the Windsor build, and I feel exactly the same with the version that's out now. Yeah. Um, Windsor build, um, for me, um, again, it was surprising, but um, I kind of feel a lot of those elements are in version one. Mm-hmm. The Windsor build, I didn't feel as many bugs as I did in zero point nine, and um, it's just that initial feeling of what we tried at Windsor with the sharp kicks, which are now is it stunning kicks? Stunning sharp, stunning. yeah, is it? Yeah. yeah. Now that's in in the Windsor build. It was the slow pace of zero point nine with the stunning shots and stunning passes mm. to speed it up. Mm. Whereas now we've got a little bit more faster gameplay with the uh, stunning passes, shots, variants, whatever. So it's a it's a very good mix. I feel that the defending in version one is better again. I feel that you can punish people um, for them using the press button because if you hold it in, you, you can see the the run around like headless chickens, mm. and you can just easily punish people who are trying to hold in the press button but obviously we didn't we couldn't test that in the windsor build because there was no such thing as um ai press or anything like yeah, that yeah yeah there was no um so yeah i think version one in comparison to the windsor build it feels a little bit similar but from version nine to version 9.1 and then version one i think it's a much more respectable update and for me, even though I'm not an online gamer, I am enjoying the Dream Team mode. And, uh, yeah, I think it's on course to um, do something good. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do in the future with the next update. A uh, few little issues that I do have with the current update, but you get that with every game. Mm. Um, it's just a case of you know trying to feed it back. And if it gets uh, fixed or whatnot, fantastic. But um, so far, so good. And um, I'm currently happy with the update. Nice. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, Spoonie, I mean, obviously for you, we, uh, Cam was talking about the defending and stuff there. You did, I saw you had a tutorial up today of the defending, which mm-hmm. I think is probably one of the most, like, the biggest thing for me, just to jump in, was like, I kind of could not stop talking about the defending at the Windsor build that we played. And yeah. like I prefaced it by saying, look, it's not, it's not perfect. Like there was still niggles there. There was still feedback we all gave. It wasn't like we went and we're like, oh, this is amazing. You know, this is like, yeah, there was different aspects of the game I felt were very impressive. And we all had different, you know, like levels of what we were impressed with, you know, because we all have different opinions, which is great. Yeah. There was some people obviously that weren't blown away with it. There were some people that were blown away with it. But I do think like the defending was the biggest thing that stood out to me in what we played at Windsor, that it was like... Yeah, so for the Windsor build, remember, <laughs> I got my score sheet up here because I had to <laughs> sort of remind myself of... You're putting us to shame like with your professional. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, in terms of the Windsor build itself, I just remember the defending being very, very difficult. Like, mm. I was thinking, if you put that out to the community, <laughs> whilst me and you enjoy it because we play this game to death, yeah i would say um i think the average player would just be like totally turned off by it and it's already happening now man with the way it is in v1 people are complaining about it because it's yeah they are but v1's even 
is a lot easier than yeah yeah than i agree i agree in the winter build way easier like i would say it's got gradually easier over time yeah I think, yeah i think windsor was the hardest one mm-hmm. they were 0.9.0 was probably the second hardest and they, they gradually increased the responsiveness it was quite difficult to try and get used to the adapted uh adaptive feedback from the the trigger mm. and i think that's been removed now in version one seems to be uh yeah. I, I mean, I've I tried. Don't, it. I don't I've, feel I've any tried. of it at all. Yeah, no, I, I've no. tried it. I've tried. I tried like a little bit, and it doesn't seem like they're jogging or anything. Whereas in the older builds, you could like jog, you could do a fast walk, you could do a, you know, just below a sprint. <laughs> mm. Um, you know, so and then you can have full on sprints. So I think I think that just added complexity, and it's probably why they moved away from that. Mm. Like trying to program around that, maybe I don't know if they had some difficulties there, and that's what was causing this. You know, play, do you remember players used to slide all over the place? If you had <laughs> yeah. the sprint down, held down, if you, your players would just go sliding. And even it was even in the trailer. You know, you'd saw, see Neymar take a touch inside and the guy would be like flying off into the advertising boardings. Um, <laughs> yeah. But V1, um, I'm actually impressed. I like, I was thinking, ah, oh, this is, this. I saw the footage that everyone else saw and I thought this is going to be like, a five or a six out of ten. Mm. I think it's around it. I think if I was to score it right now, like I'd score about a six point five, and you think, oh, that's that's not very good. Six point five, I'd say, would be a pretty good I score. That's because, respectful to me. No, I think it's because fair I, I I think I think it's a good base. What they've got now yeah. is a really good base. You compare it to the move from Pez two thousand thirteen to Pez two thousand fourteen. Mm. That mm. was an absolute car crash. That was a, like a two out of ten for me. You you check the Metacritics for that, that game; it was absolutely horrific. And some people would like love it. I'm like, Bloody yeah. Man, but that's the thing it. with all the games. Everyone, you'll find people that love it. Like as years pass, you're like, oh yeah, PES 2015 uh, was amazing. PES 16 was amazing. It's like, yeah, at the yeah. time, like PES 16 was like one like so super fast online you know what i mean it was so yeah. sweaty oh, online God, yeah but people yeah, have kind yeah. of forgotten that the same way as they've forgotten vander merch in mlo you know it's like look back yes. fondly now but like there was a few controllers broken for me playing against vander merch i'll tell you that back in the day <laughs> when i was an angrier man yeah. you know <laughs> yeah no i get that i get that but like obviously pez and turning to 14 was a new engine change this is a new engine change once again um but going from um you know obviously pez 21 a lot of people going oh it's not as good as pez 21 look we got to move on from pez 21 Mm. that's another completely new engine that was what seven years of development yep seven eight years of development you imagine where this game is going to be in seven eight years time you know on the on the unreal engine Mm. yeah they can can port it across you know from unreal 4 to unreal 5 next year which is what i believe they're going to do from yeah well that's the long-term plan isn't it yeah, of course. You'd it imagine, is. Yeah, like, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, it's gotta be. Um, but I, yeah, you know, go, you know, going back to from the winter build to V one, there is a lot of stuff. I remember the graphics. I think the graphics were the first thing I sort of noticed when they brought out zero point zero, zero point nine point zero. Going going from Windsor to those gr- graphics there. Oh my freaking god! I just absolutely <laughs> died. I I literally died. I was like, what is this? Um, but. The version one is very, I would say, identical to the graphics that I saw in the Windsor build, mm. and that's where I was like, "Wow, okay, well, we're back to the Windsor build, which is okay. It's not brilliant. It's not the greatest graphics, but it's all right. It's it's decent. Um, the the player faces look really really good. Mm. Um, they've took out the popping, I believe. You remember uh, you had some a little bit of popping, I think, on yeah. the point nine. Point yeah, yeah, so. And zoomed into the face um but yeah no i i am enjoying it and i'm i i'm like cal i'm not an online player but i'm mm. really enjoying the dream team really mm. enjoying it i was like yeah i, I hate my club <laughs> i think it's a really like respectable update because for me even though i didn't used to play my club a lot i used to just log in and get the free stuff but i'd have a lot of gp just sitting there yeah but now it feels like i can i can use it to my heart's content in terms of the players uh, that I can buy, and some of the players are so cheap, but mm. so good at the same uh, at the same time. So, like you know, the world is your is your oyster. You can build your own team, and you know, props to some of the people who played you know e football through its you know zero point nine and zero point nine one, and got all the bonuses, and now that they're getting really good teams because, um, in comparison to mine, my my team is 
completely awful, but at the same time, like, <laughs> I'm, I am I am enjoying it. But what I will say, Spoonie, is you do bring up a good point in terms of like how the transition was from how we got to PES 13. It was loads of years of work to get to that point. When we transitioned to 2014 to 2021, again, it was the whole however many years it was to get to a point of, you know, PES mm-hmm. 21. And now we're starting again with a new engine. And considering six months have gone by since uh, the first public eFootball build that's come out, like I said, I think this version one build is a much more uh, respectable build for the community. And yeah, online, it's pretty fun. Mm. I think they've just, I think they've just kind of like, I won't say nailed it because that's kind of too, that's too much praise, I think, because there is a lot of work still left to be done in the game. I think yeah, the definitely. biggest change and the, like from talking to a lot of people that I've talked to in different circles and seen people's reactions and stuff, I think the biggest change has come not from what the game is, like not for what V1 is. It's more of like what it can be. And I think Konami have finally succeeded in showing their vision, like, you know, that it's like this will be better over time if we give them time and that criticism of well we gave them three years and this is what we got i think that's kind of shifted a small bit like there's still some people that are that are going to you know that they're, they're going to take that with them forever that that was enough yeah. to like you know that their trust is gone and that's fair enough you know i respect anyone but i think they've finally got that point across that it's like right look this is our vision we're going to have a few steps misplaced like we're going to make mistakes but this is the vision that we have next year when we're bringing out, you know, what we would usually be bringing out in terms of like PES 23, if they had stayed on that path, they're not going to be doing that now. So it's literally going to be a year of refining, refining what they have gameplay wise, you know, anything that's OP, anything that's abused, you know, mechanics wise. And I think that's, I think that's definitely the way all sports games should probably be. Because, you know, the, the gameplay changes in the last couple of years have been very marginal. Do you know, you like PES 14 is very slow and methodical in how you approach to play. PES 15 is super fast. PES 16 is faster. And then they go back to 17 and they're like, yeah, we, re- you know, we revamped the whole passing system. There's a midfield battle now. 18 goes back to being fast. 19 goes back to being fast. And then you have my club with all the, you know, 101 rated Mbappes and stuff. That's just crazy <laughs> which it's fun don't get me wrong i loved 2021 like i think that's one of the best pez games in the last you know like i think it's definitely in my top three based on how much i played it like especially co-op but you can yeah. see the issues with it you know you can see the the downfalls of it yeah, but. yeah i think the update of this version's kind of brought the fun factor back which mm. is what i kind of had with the windsor build um not as much fighting with my controller anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I do feel uh, skills are responsive again, which I'm super happy about. Mm. Um, just the 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 stunning shot modifier. In certain aspects, it can be overpowered, but it is. I do like it. It can come across as arcadey, but I do like um, having like a a dip in shot or mm-hmm. a knuckleball shot at my yeah. disposal. It, it used to be like in in the old games. I think mm-hmm. as 2018, you could um, just before you hit the ball. Um, you could press the shoot button again. Yeah, yeah. And you could trigger like a uh, that kind of shot, but it's 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 nice to see uh, it back. But again, I'm just looking forward to what they've got in the in the in in the future. Um, also, props to Konami. I know a lot of people have already you know stated that they're only saying it just to you know save public face, but for them to apologize for the you know the public release of eFootball and that they admitted that the quality control you know wasn't there and that they only focused really on the release date um to then bring out this it might have brought back a little bit of company faith for some people Mm. due to how it is now um but again like it's like you said it is a good base and with us saying, you know, a 6.5 out of 10 for gameplay, if this is going to be constantly like a live service game and updated, Unreal Engine 5 around the, around the corner, potentially, like you said, Spoonie, you know, there is there is a bright future for the game uh, in comparison to what we tried like five, six mm. months ago. Um, if they want to make money, which all businesses do, 
and they want mm-hmm. to grow the brand and have this around to be profitable like my club was which was like a massive success from like you know they have to they have to hit the gameplay and the content like it can't just be right we can get five or six million sales did you know like of the actual product yeah. every year and that'll probably cover everything and then anything we make with my club is is a bonus or you know a mixture of both like my club tra- microtransactions and sales now it's free to play like they have to have stuff all the time there so mm-hmm. yeah like it's the same with master league people are you know i can understand and we can all understand we're we're kind of you know master league guys as well like we like playing offline and we would love do you know what i mean we would love a master league i would love edit mode there to be there in all its glory that we could be yeah. neck deep in an edit mode now and you know ready for like an option file out and all that but i'm happy to wait if when it comes out it's solid and it builds a foundation that we can build on for next year and the year after so that eventually you know it's not like okay we're starting from scratch again it's going to be a three-year project and in three years time we'll be on unreal engine you know this and that and the other i think they've done the right thing it's just well i think the gameplay is decent mm. but i think what's got the community talking and it's a bit of a stroke of genius is the dream team itself yeah i think the whole fact you can just go out choose the players you want from any team and just build your squad from scratch and how you want to build it and everyone's going out looking trying to look for the 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 best players like the, the you know trying to get value for money because mm. not everyone's got millions to spend um this would be nice if they had like a filter so you yeah. don't have to play god squads <laughs> yeah 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 um i think they'll yeah. add that though especially when they add crossplay they'd have to add some sort of filter won't they Oh yeah, you'd hope. I hope mo- so. Mobile gamers get it. We're like, yes, we yeah. <laughs> got a mobile gamer. <laughs> They'd be destroying he's everyone. Got his, he's got his bison at right back. Let's yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> they'll have to start adding that because I think, I, I think they only wanted to get, they wanted to get this yeah. base game out, and then that's why I'm, t- that's why I'm thinking maybe Thursday's update could be go- could be big because they're meant to be adding some sort of like football league, aren't they? E football league. So mm-hmm. that's going to yeah. be. You know, if people have something to play for, like they will play it. Like that's that's the big thing with a game. And as you said, like, you know, there's there there definitely you are you're right. This like it has been a stroke of genius because I've never seen as much hype. The last time there was hype like this, I think, real hype was probably the legends back in two thousand and maybe seventeen. Like when mm-hmm. people were just every time you turned on Twitter, people were hyped about it. And failing that, it was probably when MLO came out, where you could buy yeah. players with GP or whatever. Whereas this seems to be, yeah, look, as we said, like it's, it should have been in for years. I mean, all the stuff here, other sports games have, have had them in for the last five, six years. But I think just because it's with Pez, it's like, you know, we, we as fans think it's like such a breath of fresh air that we can go on and buy, you know, an 18 year old that nobody's ever heard of and train him up Mm -hmm. and think he's, you know, the best player ever and be like, yeah, you know, you should sign this guy and you get talking in, in groups and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, have you yeah. guys played much? I, I know you streamed a bit, Spoonie, but like Cam, you were saying, have you played much of it? Like, are you coming up against really strong squads? Like, yeah, I've played quite a bit of it, to be fair. Um, I think one of the first things I did was collected all my GP, and I just thought to myself, it's bringing back the old kind of uh, FIFA days for me, because I used to play a lot of Ultimate Team in like mm. 14 and 15, and you could you know build your team with like 100k and i kind of got that vibe where like i was just searching a lot of, for a lot of different type of players as you said like hidden gems and whatnot mm. and i've just played it quite a lot i'm having a lot of fun online uh but yes i have come against some very good teams like i've seen beckenbauer roberto carlos a yeah. lot of romarios yeah a hell of oh, a lot of gosh. romarios um yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, would, I personally would love to see a separate mode. Mm. Take out all the legends. Take out all the the Romarios and the Beckenbauer's and all the rest of it. Se- separate mode, same as Dream Team, except everyone starts on pretty much zero, and you just play the game. You earn small bits of money, but then at that time you just pick, start picking out players and you start assembling just a normal base squad, and everyone's going to have roughly around the same team. You get, you're yeah. all going to grow at the same time. Yeah. The way it's the way this has worked is sort of unbalanced it a little bit. I mean, I don't mind facing God squads. It's like okay, this is a challenge, you know. Yeah, gotta you're try and grind it out. Yeah, you're you're up against it. I mean, sometimes there's nothing you can do about Rorario. It's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a he, he can yeah, and if they got the 
the right players feeding him. It's just like your defenders just don't react. You're like, okay, <laughs> he's running off the ball. You see his movement, but your defenders aren't tracking him because uh, they haven't got the the defensive awareness or, mm. or what about them uh, to track that run. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's it's a great mode. It is a really really good mode. Yeah, it's that's, a great start. That's, yeah, that's, I that's think really by surprising. I think when they release the coins Thursday, though, that's going to be that's going to be when they see they, they can balance it because like I know in NBA two K they have limited time modes like once a week where you can only enter with like say a three star squad. So yeah. if you want to play, you know, like your five star squad, you could play that and you could be enter into a certain competition and you can get your rewards. But if you also want to play, you know, without all those star players, as you're saying there, Spoony, it's kind of like a limited mode. Like it's a limited, it has restrictions. So it might be like you're allowed to use, for example, in NBA 2K, it might be you're allowed to use one, um, you know, like gold ball or one black ball kind of player and then the rest of your squad have to be silvers. And yeah, I think that cool. everything is set up for them to do that because it costs nothing, barely any GP to go off and buy a team of like 70 rated players like that you can buy for yeah. like 5,000, 6,000 GP. Yeah, I'd, mm. I'd like to see that as well. I mean, it would breed a lot of creativity into mm. what teams you'd be seeing, what players that you could come up against. Um well, going back to the buying players with GP and having the freedom to buy who you want, I think it's good that this has happened because it's target targeted like a more casual play. If we had Pez Twenty One, which it is free within Pez Lite, mm. um, normally if you want to go and get out a player or get a player a specific one, you'd have to go through scouts mm -hmm. and. Sometimes acquiring them scouts can cost a lot of GP unless you know the other ways of you know getting a scout to get that player. Mm. But if you wanted to do a past and present Man United team, and you see I don't know Paddy McNair, even though he didn't really feature for United unless it was under Van Hal, you can actually buy him in game for like seven k. Mm. But if you wanted to build like a United team from like two thousand and fifteen with like Di Maria. Uh, Falco and all that you can actually just go into the database find them and buy them yeah so it's not ne not necessarily you've got to go through certain amount of scouts to try and get the player it's guaranteed that you can get it if you've got enough gp so for new players coming in it's just like oh it's the freedom of i can buy whoever i want and i can slot them in but then it's just getting used to getting them all in the uh correct team spirits mm. so that your team plays correctly um, another thing that's it's only small and cosmetic, uh, but I've seen it on uh, on Twitter. But when you fully, um, you know, get a certain player to the highest level, um, their card turns into a full image instead of it being like a square, I believe. Because mm -hmm. so it it gives you the feel of like yeah, this player is now complete to fit into near enough any squad with any tactics with any manager. Again. I like how now managers are not exclusive to like paywalls. Yeah. Um I think I think it was PES twenty one, PES twenty. Um you could get like your Guardiola or Roman, whatever he's called, but um I don't know if he was GP only or you had to play what, a certain amount I think you had to play like two hundred games to unlock him to buy him with yeah, GP but, and but now, this is what I mean. Now like if you want, you know, uh, a high line if you want four three three if you want his kind of tactics or you want Klopp's tactics or Mourinho's you could if you've got the GP you can buy it so mm, it's yeah. it, it's accessible anyone can just pick up and play the game and now that the game is obviously in a much you know respectable um, position gameplay wise it bounces off each other so we've got a mode that's fun and that you can spend you know you could say hours on building yeah. your team. And then you can spend hours playing on it. So it just it just comes together uh, quite well, to be fair. Mm. There's a lot of talking into it. Like, is there's a lot of hidden mechanic, not hidden, but it's not like Konami have a billboard up when you go into Dream Team. Like, they have a basic tutorial where it's like, yeah, this is how you sign a player, this is how you train a player. But then, like, there's there's nothing about that that holds your hand about team play style or team, you know, like matching up tactics yeah. and stuff. And I do think that that's where depth the depth comes into it. And I kind of kind of disagree because Weza, when we were talking about it, Weza made a point there. He was like, I would have liked them to kind of go into detail and nearly kind of not hold your hand, but just have the information more accessible. Whereas I'd be like, well, no, I actually want 
to go in and find this information out myself. If I have an interest to take my game to the next level, like I want to go in and see, like, you know, because NBA 2K, I keep bringing that up, but there's a lot of depth in that that they don't tell you when you're playing the modes. Like there is, you know, like little in- interactive kind of tutorials and stuff in the modes, but it doesn't tell you exactly all the hidden tricks that give you an advantage of like matching up dynamic duos and matching players. And, you know, certain players are have better like shot effectiveness from you know like heat zones on the on the court you know that kind of way so there's like a lot of stuff that they don't tell you um and i like that i like that i think that adds to the charm of it because it's like as you were saying there tonight cam like i didn't know that that you were saying there about the player's image and i'm like oh that's actually kind of cool like i'm glad you know i learned that there today but like there's a lot of stuff in it that like the amount of questions i got was like how can i improve my team they're you know they're terrible I signed this guy, he's 80 overall, but he's only shown up at 64 overall or whatever. And it's like, yeah, because your team style or play style is like, you know, so low that like, you know, your manager can, you know, link up with him. So I, I, I like that. I know it's not for everyone, but I think that the, the, there's a lot of depth there. And especially for someone like you, Spoonie, I mean, like, you're probably getting tons of questions as well because you do a lot of tutorials and stuff. Like, yeah. I think that adds to the game because, you, you know, people are... You know, you could tell somebody or something to somebody a hundred times. They'll still ask you if you're streaming, like, oh, how do you do that? And it's like, I have 10 videos on this exact topic. Check them out. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But how do you do it? How do you do it? It's like, okay. You know, yeah. so. Yeah. No, I was going to say, actually, um, you know, I was looking at down the managers and there's some abbreviations that just aren't explained. I think there's like one for Pep Guardiola, something about five star PV. What, mm. what the hell's PV? Yeah. Like, what it's is like, that? um, it's like a bonus to it's it's like a manager's got a certain um I, I don't know how to explain it in the best way so like in fifa when you get a manager or in the old in the old days mm. some of them would come with like contract bonuses so if you put like a 30 30 match contract on them depending on what manager you've got it would boost it up by a percentage yeah so i don't know if every kind of manager has got their own boost so um mm. i don't know I, if i love that I love that. I've got, I got yeah. trust. I got Mister Trust the Process FC. Um, Arteta. <laughs> yeah, as yeah, Arteta's he's a good like, manager though. He's got he's yeah, really yeah. good manager. Yeah, yeah, under yeah, under um, I think it's an under twenty four year olds. Uh, yeah, he gets the boost with that. Boost. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But yeah, no, look, it's been, it's been refreshing, hasn't it? To be kind of like I find it refreshing anyway to kind of log on to Twitter, and not just like even though all the criticism was warranted, and I think that the people were dead right to kind of like speak out when they, you know, as like be as critical as they possibly wanted to be because V0.9 was nowhere near what we, you know, wanted or what we deserved. But it is nice to kind of go on now and be able to have a conversation with people about eFootball that doesn't result into, you know, like, oh, why are you still playing this game? You know, why? Like, it's just a waste of time. And it's like now I think that tide has turned a little bit that you can actually have the conversation that people are like, yeah, you know, it's, it's not there yet, but I'm enjoying it. Like, that's all that matters to me. You know, if yeah. I get an hour, yeah. come home, kids are in bed, or I'm off work this Saturday, I can sit down and play for an hour or two, as you said, Cam. Even if it's just in the, even if it's just menu playing, where you're looking at players and, you know, like looking at different players that you could potentially sign. And it's like, yeah, he's 23. He'll fit with Arteta and I'll get a boost for him and his experience. Like, there's a lot of, a lot of depth in it that wasn't there before. So, yeah. I think yeah. as well, going back to the the managers having their own uh like boosts. Um with like Guardiola having like a boost for five star players, mm. the thing is your five star players are not cheap. So mm. Messi, Ronaldo, Mbappe, you know, Neymar, they're very expensive. So unless you've got a lot of five star players, you're not really gonna re- be reaping the rewards mm. from his boosts. Yeah. The only yeah. thing you're really going to be uh, getting from it is, you know, his tactics and whatnot. But yeah. obviously now you've got the freedom to, uh, you know, change the, the formation and whatnot, which I think you could do um, anyway. But going on to what you said, Barry, about like the, the criticism, it was warranted. I mean, mm-hmm. the release in comparison to what we played was poor. At the end of the day, you know, criticism is a form of communication and... Feedback helps your product go forward. And I think with what everyone's, well, majority of the community said about 
um, 0 0.9. I think it's warranted a reaction from Konami to be like, yep, yeah, we need to step it up, iron out a few issues, and bring out uh, a version that's you know respectable uh, for the community to, to play. you got to think as well, we're halfway through the football season. Um, FIFA is, you know, potentially... You know, coming to you know that end of like it's near the tail end of the season. Mm. It's the novelty's wearing off of a new game, but at the same time, not a lot of people have been playing e football, and now that we've got a new version of it, which is a little bit different to um, FIFA, it's a break for people to be like, you know what, let's you know sack off this game for however long, and we'll come to a different game. And now that the issues have been ironed out. There's still is issues, but in yeah. terms of like the collision bugs and other stuff coming back in, like uh, tactics and second man press, people are really now seeing that what we actually played in Windsor isn't like a dream. Like, mm. it wasn't something that we just made. <laughs> well, up some people because... thought we didn't play anything, you know that. <laughs> yes, I know. They I, thought we I just am... fucking made it up. Like, I mean. I've seen people say, "Was there even sharp kicks?" I was, I was like, "Yes, I've, I've played it. Like, there's, yeah. there's no, there's <laughs> no doubt what, we, there's no doubt what I played was, you know, it was all there. Uh, everyone there was told that, you know, it'd be a different. Uh, we, we, we was playing a, a lighter build to the one that would release, but mm. I never thought it would be so different yeah. when it got released. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, I think when did. we, when, when. It it came out. I think uh, I spoke to you, Barry, and we were both like, "the the defending, like, where's it gone? Mm. It's just completely non-existent." And now for it for it to be in a much more respectable place, hopefully people can kind of see what we played and think, yeah. "Oh, so they were actually, you know, telling the truth. And it's not just <laughs> you know complete BS." But uh, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, like, and I've said this before, like, I like I like you know I like that people. Okay, maybe not question us that we were liars, but I like when yeah. people question us because at the end of the day, we all have different opinions and we all have different levels of what is it, you know, what we what we find like worthy in a football game or what we find acceptable in a football game compared to the next mm -hmm. person. Like the three of us have very different ideas of what I'd be happy with putting up with in a football game and the trade-off as to what I enjoy out of a football game, like, the three of us would have very different ideas about it. Like, yeah. I think yeah, where definitely. it comes is, like, we're not, you know what I mean? We're not the be-all and end-all of, like, feedback and, you know, impressions. I mean, we're we're just playing the game, giving our impressions, and that's it. Like, it's, it's, it's good to be questioned, and it's good to be like, yeah, but was the defending as good as you remember? And it's like, yeah, it was. Like, I remember it was very difficult, and it was very risk-reward, needed a lot of work you know but yeah that's what i remember playing and i think that that's it was good that you know everything everyone was questioning but as you said cam yeah. i don't think we could have even like you know it was just very different like there was features you know like we had a, a sharp kick feature in the build we played that was an nv 0 0.9 that people are only seen in the last like week so it's like yeah. yeah of course we played something differently it had a whole different pace to v 0 0.9 like, I always reiterated that I never saw in the many games I played at Windsor, I never saw players coming in with no heads. I never saw the referee disappearing into an endless pit in the in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> Do you know, like, we didn't see that stuff. Like, yeah. And if we had seen that stuff, we would have said it. Like, that's the thing. But, yeah, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Um, and it's nice I mean, to kind of... We all spoke positive and negative on oh, it. Oh, yeah, of course, was, of course. I think, I think it was just the fact that it was such a disaster and we did mention something positive about it. It was yeah. like, well, how dare you mention anything positive about it at all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like pitchforks at us. So. But yeah, it is but what it is. It but... is what it is. I think, I think the, the whole thing of like, you know, as well, all those clips, well, most of those clips that came out in on Twitter on V0.9... Like, a lot of them were PS4 captures, and a lot of them were bugs. Like, it wasn't... Mm -hmm. Like, we were playing, like, on top of the range, like, equipment there, like, on dev kits and stuff like that. So, like, it's obviously completely different. Like, if you look at P the PS4 version now of eFootball compared to the PS5 version, there is a big difference in it. Like, not just graphically, but, like, gameplay mechanics and features, like, with the quick, you know, quick... um 
goalkeeper kicks and the ball boys and the cameras on yeah. the sideline. Like there's a lot of different yeah. stuff in the PS5 version and it's a lot quicker and mm. there was no screen stuttering or tearing in the PS5 version, but they've already come out and said that they were aware of that problem with the PS4 version. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just think it's I just think it's going to take time for them like in an ideal world they wouldn't have to develop for the PS4 because it's 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 ancient technology now uh, compared to what the PS5 is at. Yeah. But like mm-hmm. that's you know look at the user base it's on PS4 especially in like you know different countries that maybe are like not, not notorious that's the wrong word but like they're just like avant kind of like offline players like that they mm-hmm. just buy the game and play online they don't even log into my club there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of places that do that maybe because you know that's what they've grown up with or whatever um but yeah I do think that yeah, look, it was it was kind of it was nice to play an early build, but like I'm just glad that people are kind of kind of seeing this now. I just wish that what had released like last Thursday had released back in September <laughs> and it would have been, you know, it would have been it would have been the ideal world, but I'm glad with what we have now at the moment. Like I'm still like I'm just sitting here and I'm just I'm kind of like fuck it, I better bin these two boys off now. I want to go on and have a few games before bed, you know what I mean? <laughs> and like that hasn't been something that's been in my head I'd usually be saying that about Warzone or NBA 2K unless yeah. I was playing co-op. Like I still think Pez co-op is amazing the last few years, but I'd be like, oh, I can't wait to get onto Warzone now for an hour later when the missus is in bed. Now I'm like, I wonder if I could get a left midfielder for about 22,000 GP. That would, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That would link up with yeah. my squad. Like, and yeah, look, we're all, we're all in that same boat now. It's not a perfect product by a long, a long way, but I do think that we're definitely in a better position than we were back in September. So, what do you, what do you guys think about the GP you get once you've done the events? Just a hundred GP generally, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that's in? that's that's a joke. Like, I think it's rubbish. It's, but I yeah. think it needs to be increased. I think when it the, sort of kills uh, your, go on, kills your, yeah, sorry, it just it just kills your sort of vibe to like get on and play. I find I'm like, yeah. just like I'm gonna play for like twenty minutes for a hundred GP. You know, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's hardly worth it. You know. Hopefully, yeah. this e football league's got much more enticing GP rewards because, like you said, playing for 100 GP after a, an antagonizing game against God squads, you know. Yeah, GP. Exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just like yeah, because the they'll need to for... they'll need to bring in something that they'll need to bring in something that like even if you're if if you're losing a match now at the moment, like two nil, you can just quit like. And I know, like, there's no, there's, yeah, okay, yeah, you, like, you you won't get your 100 GP or whatever it is, or, like, that's not enough of a deterrent. Whereas, like, if you had a way of, like, tracking GP earned in-game, whether it's through in-game objectives, it's like, you know, string together 15 passes with your center midfielder or, like, you know, Benzema's on top form, score a goal with him. You score a goal and it's, like, 10,000 GP and you're, like, okay, I'm losing, I'm losing 10-1 but I have my 10,000 10, GP already locked there. I just need to see this game out. Like this guy can yeah. win 10-1, I don't really care. And you can play the long game. Whereas at the moment and for the last few years with my club, it's like if you're not winning in the first half, people can just quit and then just load into yeah. another game and hope they get somebody you know, worse than them to play or to dominate. So I do think that yeah. they will look at stuff like that because the GP, they're going to have to balance the GP now because they've already set the precedent for that. You know, it can't just be like, oh, the next 10 agents are going to be, you know, coin only. It's like, no, that's not going to fly now because the market no. is open for people to actually play it. Like, you know, and they'll have to they'll have to reward people that are willing to sit there and play against the AI as well. Because, you know, why 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 have it in the mode at all if you're not going to give people the, the chance to, to get GP like from winning stuff? That's the way yeah. I'd look at it like. But yeah. yeah, Spoonie, you're right. It is 100 GP. I mean. I wouldn't get out of bed for that now. I wouldn't get out of bed for 100 yeah, GP yeah. For, per match, you know. So what would yeah. you guys say in terms of, uh, let's say Nuno Mendes, incredible uh, left back. Would yeah, you monster. be welcome in Konami potentially um, revisiting um, player prices depending on the popularity? Or would you like all players to stay at their same price like going forward? Mm. Well, if you remember in MLO, the player, that's how the player prices did. It was like the more popular the yep. player, he'd boost up. So I, exactly. I think that's what comes into, like I mentioned earlier, the player value is that like, I think that, yeah, I, I think that's a great point, Cam. That's, 
that would be that would be mental like because if you had the player now you could sit in him and you could be like I got this guy for 20,000 GP exactly. now he's worth 100k yeah. do I trade him in and turn him into two two players or do I hold on and and then he could go <laughs> down and up as it, as his form drops and whatever that's yeah that's, a, that's tried, an excellent uh, uh, have excellent any of you topic. tried Timber from Ajax the centre back no no is he oh, good? Mate. yeah he's good isn't he he's very him. good yeah, he's, I got the I tongue. Think, in. I, think, I think he's <laughs> way <better> on <laughs> You're signing Harry Maguire next, Booney. I heard through the grapevine. I, I, I tell you what, mate. He's on my. I, I actually played his United uh, earlier today against the AI just to test some things out. And I was thinking he's actually pretty good on, on off offline. Yeah, like that. he might be might be worth a buy. <laughs> he seems to like gravitate towards the ball instantly. He's like bang. Yeah, bloody hell! Not used to have a tongue and a rayo about that doing that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be class though. There'd definitely be a big, a big market for that. I think they will bring that in. That's a great point because they already have the infrastructure there for it with the player values. Yeah. So like, yeah, I could imagine. Like you just imagine the players, especially as as people are able to earn GP, it makes sense because like if you want, I think Lewandowski is the most expensive player in the in the market. Is he? At the moment, yeah. At the moment, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. But I've not seen a lot of him. I've not seen a lot of him at all. And yeah. I think if players did go up on popularity, let's say I don't know, every two weeks via a live update or something like that, it's not like you could get the meta players easy. It's like mm. now you've you've really got a you know Mind. if if you if you I want that exactly if you want that meta player, you've got to you know get the GP for it. But whether they do that, I don't know. But you know. I, 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 I personally would love that being a content creator. I could be just like, oh, you guys, you've got to sign this player because he's in my squad, obviously. And then yeah. everyone goes and buys him. You could do player pro- reviews. Yeah, yeah, I could. I'm like, oh, you've got, you got to buy this player. Yeah, so if I've got some really crap on my team and I want to sell, I'll be like, right, <laughs> guys, you need to sign this player. He's absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> him him. Now he's worth 200k. <laughs> get him quick. Get him quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that would be sick. Yeah. But that's that was that's what used to happen in the old MLOs. Remember with the players, the form used there used to be half the database that would go be up form, like they'd be max like form, and then half the database yeah. would be down. So like what I used to do, or what most people used to, do, was like you'd have two different squads for every second week. So you'd like sell your entire squad when they'd be down, and then buy the up squad, and then you you know you'd rinse and repeat like, and you'd have a you'd be playing with the top players all the time. Um, but if they did bring in a way of kind of policing that, yeah, it would be it would be class if you could. Then it would really become a thing of like you'd have to unearth mm. like, you know, your likes of your Timbers or the likes of your yeah. Nuna Mendes's, where it's like, okay, he's twenty grand at the moment, but now he's after going up to sixty. I'm sitting on him. I can sell him for sixty, or I can sell him for fifty. Like there would be there would be a thing there that like you could you could play the long game, like be like holding stocks, player stocks, where you'd be like, this guy's going to be a beast. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like it would be, yeah, that'd be clap. Oh, I'm getting excited now. Cam, you're getting me excited. It's too late to be getting this, getting me excited like this. I'm trying to wind down now. Now, like he's cheap as chips, but I see a lot of uh, uh, Darwin Nunes from Benfica. Yeah, yeah he's incredible. He's really good. Incredible. So that's what I mean. Like because we know he's that good and we know he's that cheap. Should they increase his price going forward? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. they probably will. I'd say they will. The more people are buying him. There's a load of players like that though. Like there's a load of players that are like right on the cusp that have yeah. way better stats than they should have for the price. It's just I mean about... I tried Haaland and I don't I, I feel he's not like he turns like a truck, I just feel he's a little bit clunky, but Nunes That's because his balance is fifty. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, there we go. There you go. And then we've got someone like Nunes cheaper. He feels perfect to pop mm. into a squad he sent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of players like that. I mean that's why it's everyone is going to have a favorite kind of player. Like there's a lot of players there that are like play way above their stats, which is an old Pez thing as well. Like I found a guy today. He's like, he's, I don't know. Is he like, he's, I think he's like 67 overall, but he's like a winger. He's like a, a Japanese winger. He plays, he's on loan for giving you all my tips. Now I should be, I should be, uh, I should be keeping these to myself, you know, but I might do a video on like a few hidden gems because I found like this guy and he's like 67 overall and he has literally, you want to see the player skills he has, like he's everything that you'd want and you know, he's got his dribbling, he's got his pace and he's like, I think he's like about 6k, like that's 6,000 GP Wow. and he's like, 
he's just ridiculous. Like, like I, I think he's amazing. Like he's just, he plays way above his stats. Do you know that kind of way? Like he's really tight control, yeah. lovely player ID. He's got a real face. He's on loan for a Belgian team. I can't think of him now, but, um, I think he's a left winger or right winger or something like that. But I think that, like that, that excites, he excites me more. He, yeah. He excites me more than, um, than like, you know, obviously Romario is my marquee signing, but it's like, I want to see what this guy can do at level. Like, you know, when he's maxed out, when I'm training him up yeah. fully, like yeah. will he be able to actually keep the likes of, you know, the top class wingers, like your man is or your, your, whoever you're going to play on the wing. Like if I, if I'm playing a four, three, three or four, five, one, is he going to be able to keep them out of the team? And it's like, I hope so, because, you know, you kind of get a bit of a bond with him then where you're like, I'm not selling him. I don't care if he's 2 million GP, he's staying in the squad. And, you know, you have your old favorites like Castolos and all them back through the years then. So, well, well, if they bring, if they do bring in filters where you can't play gods, you know, there's going to be filters where you can't play god squads, for mm. example. You can face people with similar squads. That's when that's going to come into play. Yeah. Because you're going to have that 67 rated winger alongside Romario or whatever, but that's going to drive your your team strength down. But even though mm. he plays probably just as good as, say, Mario or someone, you know, yeah. could be... Yeah, could yeah be his stats effective. are sick. Like, And I haven't even trained him up, um, but he's like all like like low 70s to mid 70s in like dribble and ball control. And like he literally has like, literally like every player skill like that you could need like for a winger. And yeah, he's just sick. I'm not going to tell you his name now. I should give you too much information. You're probably going to sign him now. <laughs> <laughs> totally but, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah no he yeah, is he's he's but there's a there's a load of lads like i've seen a load of lads using um who was the other lad i saw oh i can't think of his name now yeah he's uh, really good for leon yeah it's him. he's another one he's really cheap graven birch as well but he's a bit the ix guy is he he's he's yeah. expensive as well but yeah there's loads of them in around that like 10k and under that are like ridiculous if you train them up a little bit like just a small bit even Timber, Matoma? yeah, Timber is. I'm not too no, sure. No, Matoma. Oh, Matoma. Matoma. Is that, What's he? Center midfield. Oh uh, yeah, Matoma. That's the guy. That's him. That's him. That's, uh, the, that's guy, the winger. Yeah. That's the winger. Yeah, see his yes, stats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't. No, I just literally typed in uh, Japanese winger online Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> I should have kept it to myself. Right, to the point. No, look, he's not. He's not a world beater. Like he's just one of these guys that, if you look at his stats, like compared yeah, to. Yeah. Uh, they start talking him down now. I'm, I'm gonna sign yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah. No, he's actually, Crap. he's actually shit. Yeah. I'm coming after you. <laughs> yeah, no, he's sick. He's sick. But um, yeah, lads. I mean, that's that's kind of pretty much everything. It's good to have a chat with you anyway and get our thoughts yeah, on yeah. everything. We'll have to do it again. Not leave it as long the next time because it's been a great chat, and hopefully we that's see each other yeah. on the on the pitch soon. Yeah, oh, yeah, that'd be fun. If I meet one of you matchmaking and I see I'm coming up against fucking Matomo now and he scores a goal against <laughs> me, sure. I'm never talking to the two of you again. I'm just going to rage quit. I'll be like, oh, yeah. You know, I'll be just sick, sick of my mouth. But um, yeah, lads, it's been it's been a good chat. I mean, I hope I hope um, I hope that we can do it again soon because there's like we could probably stay talking for another hour. But definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. been. Uh... What, I, what, I, what I will say is that this podcast has filled in a beautiful time because I've just checked the Man United Liverpool score. Yeah, me too. And um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not a happy uh, camper right now. So. Why? What's the no, score? Two all. <laughs> Four nil. <laughs> oh, I was thinking. thinking. <laughs> you're a Liverpool. You're you're a United fan, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah same. Um, same. I was thinking when you said that you, I thought you were Liverpool there for a second. I thought they'd come back. I was oh. like, there's no way that you come back. <laughs> <laughs> and that's embarrassing no though chance. United are just oh, I don't know they're so bad at the moment yeah, you know right. I don't know maybe they're due a Konami comeback soon you know they just this is their this is their moment to shine <laughs> they're amazing they need to sign guys. Matomo and uh, they'll turn their season around then <laughs> they sign him on the wing yeah 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 he's an absolute beast <laughs> But uh, yeah, lads, I'm 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 happy to end it there anyway because we usually try and keep them well to about an hour, but we've gone over that. But uh, let's see if anything to add. I need to have a shower and go to bed and play a bit no, of no, football. But uh, that's all good. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, we'll definitely, we'll definitely, we'll like definitely do man. another episode anyway because I really enjoyed the chat. Some great points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been good to catch up because, like, like I said before, we we went, uh, you know, live slash on air. Uh, we've we've not spoken since the last podcast 
so coming into this and hearing everyone's thoughts on um you know the version that we played at Windsor and the version that came out and the version we've got now it's nice to see uh, our reaction on this podcast and then obviously the community uh, the community uh, reaction on social media as well so it's nice to see that there's a bit of a happy medium at the moment yeah all right lads i'll end it there and uh lads we'll be back whenever we're back hopefully we'll be back with spoonie and cam sooner than we were in the last episode which is back in september so yeah keep an eye out for that one and i hope you enjoyed the the show peace yeah okay for now cheers bye bye